guys, Will here with WTF Car Reviews and Terry gonna be reviewing this all new 2023 Hyundai Elantra Hybrid Limited. And before we start, I'd like to give a huge thanks to Eli and the rest of the management and staff here at Brandon Hyundai in Tampa, Florida for making this review possible. I'll leave a link to our inventory below and if you're in the market for a new car or truck in the Tampa area, I would definitely recommend checking these guys out. For the last 33 years, Hyundai has been a top competitor in the compact sedan segment thanks to its Elantra. The seventh generation Elantra that you see here was released in 2021 and that brought alongside the hybrid. The hybrid is available in two different trim levels, starting with the blue at $24,000 and limited at $29,000. Both trim levels are available with the same power plant, the 1.6 liter four cylinder, made it to an electric battery and six speed dual clutch transmission. Cranking out 139 horsepower and 195 pound feet of torque, you can expect zero to 60 in the low eight second range. The base blue Elantra hybrid can get combined 54 miles per gallon, 53 city, 56 highway for some reason, the limited, I'm assuming it has something to do with the added weight and upgraded sound system, gets 49 in the city, 52 in the highway with 50 combined MPGs. The limited gets everything that you would get on the blue trim level, plus a couple additions, starting with the advanced forward collision system with junction turning detection, which detects oncoming vehicles for a left-hand turn. So if you're making a long left-hand turn the car will automatically stop itself and beep at you in a worst case situation if you don't see the car on your left side. So that's a nice feature. We also get a rear park assist with reverse automatic braking, adaptive radar cruise control with highway driving assist. And it's a semi-autonomous system which automatically steers, brakes, and accelerates the vehicle for you. Outside, we get 17-inch alloy wheels, LED headlamps, which we did not get on the blue, sunroof, heated outboard mirrors. Inside, we get leather seats, which are ventilated and heated. Power driver seats included, but a manual passenger seat, but they're still ventilated and heated for both of the front seats. We also get a leather steering wheel, dual 10.25 inch screens, wireless charger, auto dimming rear view mirror, eight speaker Bose sound system, and Hyundai's digital key two, which is iPhone compatible, and you can start and turn off your Elantra thanks to or with the use of a phone. But again, this is a limited trim level starting at 29,000 bucks. What do we get for that money? Let's jump right in. So the front end styling, it's similar to the blue that we just reviewed in this channel. We get LED lights, same daytime running light pattern. We get the panel that houses your advanced safety features, radar cruise control with stop and go, and a full semi-autonomous system. I'm liking that black trim for the lower area. It contrasts this white paint very beautifully. There's a quite a lot going on in the street right now, but hopefully you guys can still pick it up, pick up everything that I'm saying. We get functional airflow in both corners, but overall very clean looking front end. I like how it flares out like a triangle directly leading towards that panel for your advanced safety features. The wheel and tire setup is also upgraded compared to the blue. As you mentioned, we get these 17 inch rims, not the 16 that you get from the blue and the SEL gas engine. These are again, 17 inch rims wrapped in 225 45 R17, uh, Hankook Kinergy GT all season tires. So we get some added width too, which may actually slow down the acceleration. The blue was decently quick. It wasn't a fast vehicle, but with the wider tires and overall added weight, I can see why the overall fuel economy isn't quite as good. But this is a beautiful wheel and tire setup with the gunmetal gray and silver contrast. No plastic cladding surrounding it, but we do get a splash guard. Outboard mirrors are heated, LED turn signal on it, two-tone contrast, blind spot monitoring on the glass. The glass fills up basically the entire frame. I like how we don't have any shiny chrome for the upper portion of the trim, but we get a little bit of this aluminized material for the bottom. Smart access for the driver and a front passenger. The window sticker, you guys can pause, take a look at everything you get on the 2023 Elantra Hybrid Limited. So loaded with standard features, base price of 29,000 bucks. After a few hundred bucks in floor mats and mud guards, you can expect a $30,000 total price after an $1,100 destination charge. 50 miles per gallon, very good fuel economy, not quite as good as the blue, but we do get a little bit more weight and heavy electronics inside. So 50 combined MPG, still an excellent, excellent number. Not a push to open gas cap. I'll show you where the latch is inside. Same rear wheel and tire setup, only difference is a smaller brake caliper. I'll take a step back. You guys can pick up a little side profile view. Very clean look. Out rear, LED tail lights, turn signals, and reverse lights. Shout out Brandon Hyundai in Tampa, Florida for making this review possible. We get rear parking sensing too on the limited trim, Elantra badging hybrid in the corner. It doesn't say limited anywhere out rear. The blue, it says blue hybrid out rear. So I guess that's kind of different, but basically the same exact thing out rear, that red, well not red, the black little lower diffuser area. Get a good look at your exhaust tip. And speaking of the exhaust tip, let's fire up this 1.6 liter hybrid and hear how she sounds.
All right, guys, that was the sound of the 1.6 liter hybrid sold by Hyundai for the 2023 Elantra Hybrid Limited. It doesn't really sound like a whole lot. The rev process is a little bit different compared to a standard gasoline engine, but cranking out 139 horsepower, 195 pound-feet of torque, which is the same number torque number as the end line. You can expect zero to 60 in the low eight second range. But here you have it, your gas motor next to your electric battery. What you see is basically what we get, aluminum stick connects our strut towers together, but we can shut this thing up. No struts, even for the limited, we just have a prop rod. But taking a step back and get one last look at that front styling. As far as interior, again, this is a limited top of the line limited so it's gonna have an impressive interior you'll check that out right here but although the interior is impressive up top we still get hard plastic i kind of wish we had a soft touch material for the upper portion of the door panel especially considering the dashboard is actually soft touch so really not quite sure what they were going for with that i personally touch the top portion of the door panel a lot more frequently than i touch the dashboard so it would be nice for the soft touch to at least be continued we get some leather stitch trim for the center though padded armrest it's not quite as soft as the center portion so the order of materials kind of is a head scratcher to me i kind of wish this material was on the armrest and the material on the dashboard was on the upper port of the door panel but again nippy complaints we get the auto one touch for the driver power windows for the passenger same as the blue aluminum door handle two bose speakers on your door panel two person memory seats four-way adjustable mirrors no nameplate as we step inside we get the gas cap release and trunk release Full power seats, lumbar, recline, drop, lift, and slide for the driver. Perforated leather for the middle, some quilts for the, for the bolsters. Very beautiful seat. This is a very nice seat. It's not a power seat for the passenger, but it's power for the driver and heated and cooled for both of the passengers. As far as the interior itself, first thing we notice is the steering wheel. The blue didn't have a leather wrapped steering wheel and the Limited has a very nice leather wrapped steering wheel, super soft. Perfect nine and three bolster notch. It's a similar overall steering wheel. It's just the materials are much nicer. Six o'clock spoke, we get spokes so we can have our arm on the armrest and still have a comfortable grip of the wheel. The horn, we can check it out. Pretty aggressive sounding horn. People will definitely be getting out of your way. We'll turn this air down by one so you guys can hear a little better. Voice commands, AM, FM, Sirius, volume and skip controls. You can hang up and answer your phone calls on the right side. Cruise control, radar cruise with stop and go, lane keep assist with active steering. This controls your little infotainment screen, which is complete 10.25 inch digital display. Press this OK button. You can see our 160 mile an hour speedometer and our not tack, but it's our like power indicator. It shows us our charging, eco, and overall power information. You press this button one more time, you can get a turn by turn for the navigation system, which is nice. Energy flow drive info, accumulated info, attention level, tire pressure, engine temperature, and drive mode. The drive modes include normal, sport, smart mode. We'll start the review off in normal transition into sport and just see what the overall differences are. We also get uh, select content so you can add more or take away certain things if you don't want to see them at all times. But my personal favorites to look at at all times would just be this advanced safety feature screen. It's gonna keep beeping at us that the vehicle's gonna be turned off in 24 minutes, so I'll just leave it alone. The stocks have a very satisfying click to them. Unfortunately, we don't get a blind spot image like we do on some of the other top trim Hyundai cars, but it's still nice. Auto head auto headlamps and auto high beams. We do not get rain sensing wipers for the limited. I kind of wish we did for a top trim Elantra, but the stock, the intermittent stock is right in the center. To left of the steering wheel, we get our interior lighting, 12 volt battery reset, lane keep assist, and our traction control you can disable. Tilt and telescoping steering wheel, and unlike the blue that we just reviewed in this channel, the telescope goes out a little bit further, so it's comfortable for both my feet and the pedals, and my hand on the wheel. The hood latch release is in the corner. You can get a good look at your pedals, but overall, very clean appearance. The dual 10.25 inch screen's got like a little thing going on to the left. I'm not quite sure what this is, uh, but you can let me know in the comments section and let me know because I have absolutely zero clue. The dashboard is completely padded for the entire thing, which is appreciated. The blue had only padding for the front portion. The back portion was hard plastic. The 10.25 inch touchscreen, we can check it out right here. We got hybrid, map, navigation, phone, projection, voice memo, climate, ballet mode, radio, media, setup, all that. You can see what's available. The hybrid mode, let's check it out. So we get the fuel economy average electric motor use and shows us our kilowatt usage and our energy flow. I'll, I'll probably leave it here for the purpose of this review when we take this thing out for a drive. The map, typical Hyundai Kia map, very nice response, solid resolution, not bad at all. GPS navigation is included too on the limited trim. But again, I'm gonna leave it in the hybrid mode. I think this looks the coolest 
at all times. Shortcuts if you don't want to go through the touchscreen, engine start stop, hazards. I like how the air vents go all throughout this interior. Same, well, similar design to like the new Civics. Dual zone auto climate control is available on the blue too. Heated seats also available in the blue, but the ventilated seats are available for the limited. That's an appreciated feature. 12 volt, two USB ports, and a wireless charging pad. The gear selector controls the six speed dual clutch transmission. Backup camera, we can check it out. Solid resolution and we get rear parking sensors too, guidance lines and trajectory. Nice, we can adjust the different views. You get a little over the top trailer hitch view. If you wanna really line it up in the city, make sure you're not about to crash into anything. But my personal favorite is this wide view. Throw it right back into park and we go back to our home screen. Manual shift controls in the improper directions. You can downshift and upshift. Anyway though, put it back into park. The drive mode selector, as we mentioned, we got normal sport and eco mode. We have a parking camera that you can access at all times if you don't want to put the car into reverse, but then you lose your guidance lines and trajectory. Electron parking brake with auto hold, two cup holders. You should be able to fit up to a 20 ounce water bottle in there with no issues. This little console, same as the blue, pretty soft. It's not leather stitch. I kind of wish that it was. You can open this thing up though, check it out. It's pretty spacious, same as the blue to be expected. I'd expect you to fit a six pack in there with no issues. This little arm bar bar in the center it does take up a decent amount of space it can be intrusive for certain activities but if you'd like this platform more to avoid this arm bar you can always go for a kia forte but anyway you can open this thing up it's not damped or lined with felt but it's large i'd expect you to fit 25 plus license plates in there auto dimming rear view mirror it's not frameless though but the frame is very small the interior lights appear to be led we get a sunroof too you can open it up see how far it opens it opens up pretty quickly Nice, see if it goes any further, it does. So basically out to the end of the front row, poke our way out of here. It is a beautiful day today in Brandon, Florida. It's sunny and 90 degrees on the dot. But that's about it for the front seat, guys. It's impressive for the limited trim. And I didn't mention it, but this eight speaker Bose sound system sounds very good. Other than that though, that's about it for the front seat. Let's hop out back, see how much space is offered back there, as well as the overall quality of the material. So up top, of course, hard plastic, just like up front. The middle portion is soft touch. The armrest is hard plastic, power windows, aluminum door handle, and one speaker for your Bose sound system. Massive storage down here. You'll fit a big gulp and some additional storage as well. The rear seats are leather, perforated. They are not heated or cooled, obviously, but they're still very nice leather seats. Taking a step inside, I'm a little bit over six feet tall, sitting behind my seat settings, and I still have plenty of room for my feet and my knees, easily three, four inches. No air vents even on the limited trim. I would like to see air vents in the back seat of this Elantra. We do get a cargo net though behind the passenger. We did not get that on the blue. We still have that little cubby in the center that takes up a little bit of your passenger space. The center cubby has pretty soft, Leatherette trim for the armrest, pretty comfortable. The blue also didn't have a center armrest. The lighting, LED, nice solid light brought into the cabin thanks to that sunroof. Headroom, just like the blue, I have at least an inch, maybe two of headroom. So if you're under six foot four, you shouldn't have any problems sitting back here. I just wish they had air vents for a top limited trim. That's about it for the back seat. Let's check out the trunk real quick and then take this Elantra Limited or Blue Limited or Hybrid Limited, sorry guys out for a drive so you press that button the tailgate shoots right open we get the cargo net pretty easy to throw some grocery bags in there and not have them flying all over your trunk the cutouts for the wheel wells allow you to fit a golf bag horizontally and it's a pretty deep trunk i can't reach the back seats you can fold those rear seats down 60 40 split thanks to those latches and i would expect you to fit up to a 50 55 inch tv with no problem you can shut this thing right up take a step back walk around the cilantro hybrid limited one last time, it's a nice car. Limited is a much nicer vehicle than a blue, but the blue still has just about everything you could possibly want or need for daily driving. But this is, again, a nicer car. Let's take it out for a drive. All right, guys, now we're just about seeing everything we need to see with the inside and outside of this all new 2023 Hyundai Elantra Hybrid Limited. Let's take it out for a drive. The first thing I notice is just like the blue, the throttle feels a little bit dull in normal mode but the steering feels very good, especially with this leather wrap steering wheel. It feels much more premium, about third throttle. Okay. You get up in speed, it's not blowing you away, but feels solid. 195 pound-feet of torque is a pretty decent number. The brakes feel unbelievable. Thanks to this regen braking, we'll let this guy go in front. Hopefully he picks up my flashers. Okay, so as soon as he passes by, we'll try out an acceleration off the line all right guys off the line on the gas Ooh. 
not bad. It's not gonna blow you away in terms of speed, but it feels quicker than a conventional Elantra with the two liter four cylinder. Not much quicker, but it feels noticeably quicker. That the standard Elantra will get around 30 miles per gallon. I think it's advertised like maybe 34 combined, but you'll get closer to like the 30 range. Here, you might reach 50 combined miles per gallon. It's gonna be tough to do so. You have to be a very economical driver to do 50, but 45 MPGs isn't out of the question. It feels very powerful for a vehicle that's this efficient. Like comparing it to like a Toyota Prius, this is a much nicer looking vehicle. The space is comparable, and I personally actually prefer the tech. Handling wise, we can put it into sport. The throttle gets immediately more sensitive. Steering doesn't really feel a whole lot different, at least not yet. The ride quality isn't terrible. It's not like what this vehicle shines at, but for a compact sedan, it has pretty good ride quality right here. We're gonna have some massive bumps, like craters, and we'll see how it stays composed. Not bad at all. And this has the lower profile tires compared to the blue too. Not sure what this guy's doing. He's just stopping in the middle of the road. Maybe he's doing the same thing as me. Uh, but we'll stop right here, try an acceleration off the line in sport mode. Hopefully this guy gets lost. Okay, he's pulling over, so we'll pass him. Right here. Off the line. And on the gas. Yeah. Not bad. Zero to 40. It feels quick, zero to 40. But after like 45, 50 kind of feels like it falls on his face and that's simply because it has a lot of torque but really not that much overall power the 139 horsepower it's really nothing to write home about it's okay 195 pound feet of torque though that's a good number right here throwing it in a little bit of body roll but not much coming out nice it feels strong and as far as like isolation from the road you hear a tiny bit of road noise once you're up there in speed we'll step out onto this highway in one second get to some higher speeds and just see how the overall road noise is. But even in sport mode, the throttle is not too sensitive. I kind of wish the regular mode's throttle was sport mode and then they added a little bit more sensitivity for sport mode. But I understand why they did that. The more dull the throttle, the better chance you have of actually reaching 50 miles per gallon. But as soon as this guy is out of our way and we have a chance, we'll take a step out to this highway and I'll catch back with you in one sec. But okay, we'll, we'll have a good rolling start on the gas. Okay. Okay, not bad at all. As far as like the lane keeping assist system, we'll get away from this van real quick. We do get the highway driving assist, so it should be interesting to see how it works. It should accelerate for us too. We'll press this button right here. Ooh, wow, immediately. Not bad, check this out. Wow, that's impressive. It's not gonna stop for us. I highly doubt it anticipates the red light. So I'll slow down for it, but wow, that is a great system. Obviously you shouldn't rely on it, use it as like a safety net, but it's impressive. All right guys, off the line, yeah, the throttle feels great. We gotta get into the left lane. Okay, it's beeping at me because there was someone in our blind spot, but yeah, these systems, the assists work very well. Once we take a step onto this next road, I'll test out the radar cruise control, see if it actually lets us stop and go, and I'll catch back with you. All right, guys, testing out this adaptive cruise control with the steering assist on. It keeps us well centered in our lane. I'm very scared to see if we actually slow down for these cars. We are not slowing down, so I'm going to have to intervene and use my brake pedal. But I guess it's more of like a while you're driving in traffic kind of thing. So if the flow of traffic is like three or four miles per hour faster or slower than you. It automatically adjusts to it. But don't, don't expect it to be like a true stop and go system like right here. Yeah, it's not going to go accelerate for us i'll try it for the keeping assist okay so we're set for 40. cool see if it maintains our distance nice it's working we're very far away from the car in front of us so I'm not quite sure how it's keeping the distance, but overall, this is an impressive car. The steering assist works fantastically well. The radar cruise control, obviously, I would never ever recommend relying on it. I wouldn't recommend relying on the steering assist either, 
but still to have these as safety nets, emergency features is really impressive for a sub $30,000 hybrid, which can get 50 combined miles per gallon. So overall, if you're looking for a fuel efficient vehicle with all the bells and whistles, you want all the advanced safety features, the semi-autonomous driving, the upgraded sound system, and also these amazing heated and ventilated seats, I would 100% recommend going with the Elantra Hybrid Limited. As far as like value, the blue gives you a lot of features for the money, but the blue doesn't give you the luxury features. The cloth seats aren't anywhere near as impressive as these. So if what you're looking for is top MPGs for the lowest possible price, absolutely go with the blue. But if you want some bells and whistles, you want that adaptive cruise control, um, upgraded sound system, nicer 10.25 inch screens, definitely go with the limited. It's still a very nice vehicle for sub $30,000. And a huge thanks to Brandon Hyundai in Tampa, Florida for making this review possible. I'll leave a link to our inventory below. And if you're in the Tampa area looking for a new car, SUV or truck, because they do sell the Santa Cruz now, I would definitely recommend checking these guys out. And huge thanks to all you guys for watching. I had a great time making this video. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. If you've already subscribed, thank you so much. You know the channel is just not possible without you guys and I really appreciate the constant support. But again, if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. Leave a like too, it really helps me out the YouTube algorithm. That's how these videos get promoted to new people. Leave a comment, let me know what you like, let me know what you don't like. Leave a comment, let me know if there's any specific cars, SUVs, or trucks you'd like to see reviewed in this channel too. Let me know what the trim levels are and I'll definitely try to get those videos for you as soon as possible. Other than that, again, thank you guys so much for watching and I hope all of you have a great day.